Kumal and uh, I'm a technical architect. What we're going to have a look at today is some of the new capabilities that we have with Server vNext around clustering and availability um, capabilities. So I'll just move on to the next slide. So what we're going to have a look at today, uh, I'll touch on the new things that has improved on Windows Server vNext. Uh, there's two capabilities that I'm going to talk about. Uh, one is the cloud witness, how we can use uh, cloud when we have either a multi-site cluster deployment or we can look at some, some scenarios, it's, it's applicable. I'm also going to talk about the rolling upgrade capability. Um, so these are the two main capabilities that I'm planning to demo, but in general we will we will touch on the uh, the new capabilities that's been introduced on so the first capability that I talk about is the rolling upgrade capability. So one of the challenges that we have with the current uh, server 2012 R2 clustering and, and uh, if you look at the previous releases, whenever a new operating system gets released, uh, the migration for your clusters, it's not very seamless. Um, so the process, if you look at, involves in for you to build a new cluster and use the copy uh, cluster wizard to move your workload across, which is which doesn't give you the uptime that you want. So it actually needs uh, needs a downtime to move your resources. Um, so what what's going to be introduced in server v next is the OS rolling upgrade capability. So the benefit of this is that we we call it a mixed uh, mixed OS cluster, which really allows you to join server v next. Uh, nodes into your existing Server 2012 R2 cluster. So what this really allows us to do is uh, upgrade, which will not have any downtime. So we will join our additional nodes, or what we can do is uh, we can remove some of the existing nodes, prep them with Server 2012, uh, prep them with uh, Server V Next, and then we can join to the existing cluster. So that's a key uh, key feature that's going to be released on uh, on Server V Next. Moving to the next capability, this is the cloud witness. Again, uh, a key key feature that uh, that's coming up on on Server Next. So the witness is really the component that um, breaks the ties. If 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 it's two um, nodes in a cluster, and if it cannot decide which one's going to own resources, the the quorum is what actually um, gives us information. Uh, give, it decides which which node is going to own those resources. So the challenges that we had uh, when you look at doing a, a disaster recovery or when you have multiple sites, we had to have a requirement of a third site to have our witness. So when you when you look at uh, the best example would be exchange uh, stretched across your primary and DR sites or stretched across two two sites, you you had to have a witness sitting on a third site to to look look at your uh, exchange instances in in site one and site two. And when there's a failure that takes place, let's say your your site one goes off, and you need your services to be mounted on on site two, um, the quorum is the decider. The quorum will decide which which nodes actually going to own those resources. So the problem um, around that is uh, most of the customers don't have a third site; they just have uh, they just have two sites. So how how we eliminated that um, is that we either host it on uh, on on the second site. Or we, we use a branch site to to host it, which which isn't the the best uh, possible solution. So with with moving forward to Server Next, um, Microsoft is introducing Cloud Witness. So what we have with Cloud Witness is the capability for us to use Azure as a service and uh, use Azure as a file witness. So what it's going to do is it's it's going to create a um, it's going to use Azure Storage, and it's actually going to create a file on Azure that um, checks on your cluster cluster nodes, and it will help you to de determine which ones going to own your quorum, uh, which ones going to own your resources. So that's that's a new new capability that's that's going to be introduced on uh, Server V Next. Moving forward, um, one of the other things that's improved is the the property called Site uh, that gets introduced on Server V Next. So what this property does is it allows us to isolate, um, it allows us to separate cluster instances between a site. 
So if you have an exchange or a SQL cluster that's spanning across multiple multiple sites, the new cluster site property allows us to specify certain heartbeat thresholds. So for instance, I can say in, in my, my primary site, uh, my heartbeat is uh, two milliseconds because I know for a fact that I have a very good network. My, my network is a 10 gig network and I know that I'm not going to miss heartbeats in my network. So I can specifically uh, say in this subnet, um, my, my heartbeating needs to be two seconds. If it's not going to be two, two milliseconds, uh, I need services to fail over. So when we look at that, that scenario, when we move into the second site where I might not have the, the best available network equipment, I might not have a 10 gig um, network activity. In that case, I might not be able to have the same level of uh, availability for my for my network. So then I can I can using the site property I can say um, in this this network this is going to be the the heartbeat. So it can be I can reduce it to five milliseconds. So even if I lose heartbeats, it still it will still own the resources and it will keep on keep on running. So this really gives us a more granular control in terms of defining your heartbeats per site, heartbeats across site. And also we have other properties that, that actually defines uh, the cross-site delays, the cross-site thresholds, which will determine uh, whether your cluster resources needs to fail over to a second node or not. It is really to understand how resilient your cluster is going to be, it's the tolerance level for your cluster. So for instance, if you, if you need to uh, make your cluster tolerable for like 10 packet drops or 15 packet drops, those are the capabilities that we, that we uh, configure. Because if, if that's not configurable, what, what usually happens is that um, because of a packet drop or a packet loss, your services will move from one instance to another. And uh, it could also move from one site to another site, whereas it's really not a, um, not a site failure. But because of that packet loss, it's moved your, um, moved your services across. So that's, that's a few new capability that's coming in to let you do all that configuration that you need to do give you more granular uh, control over how you manage your heartbeats. Um, this, the, the other features that you look at is really around the diagnostics because uh, one of the, one of the um, feedback that, that the team gets from customers is really around how, how am I going to uh, diagnose my cluster. So if you really look at it, the previous um, operating systems with 2008 server, um, for us to run cluster uh, validation, um, when you run that, it actually brings your disks offline. So you didn't have a capability for you to um, to do a cluster validation on a running cluster. So that was improved in uh, Server 2012 R2. So now in the cluster validation wizard, if you look at, if you right click run validation, you actually can export your disks. So your disk resources will not get, um, will not be offline. So you can actually do a cluster validation now on a, on a running running cluster. So further improving that, the diagnostics and the logs, they've been improved. And uh, because when you look at the, the cluster logs, it's it's uh, difficult to find certain errors because there's a lot of uh, noise, uh, as we call it, that gets logged in the uh, the cluster logs. That's that's actually been uh, simplified in a way, but um, it also allows you to change those settings if you need to. So you, there's a there's a dump log level, uh, which you can increase if you need to get more detailed logs, or you can reduce that if you don't need to. So those are some of the minor improvements, but. It really helps uh, IT IT pros and uh, admins when you want to do uh, troubleshooting on on your cluster to identify uh, issues. The other capability, um, some of the other features that's been improved is the dump size. Uh, you can also reduce that because what happens is if there's a, um, a blue screen or the the services uh, the services get hanged, you get a dump file. So now with with Vnext, you you get the control to be able to um, Modify the size of your dump file, so that's that's another uh, capability that's been improved on uh, Servi Next. So debugging is um, what we use for analyzing the the cluster logs. So this is really to find out if there are issues with the cluster. So if we have a dump, we can we can go ahead and analyze the dump if we want to do uh, analytics to find out if there are any issues in the cluster. So it's more around uh, debugging. So on so we next, um, it's zero downtime debugging because you can now do live captures of your failures in the cluster. So again, these are minor improvements, but uh, really helps when we want to troubleshoot and uh, and diagnose a cluster. So 
one of the other features that's improved, so this one's not specific for, for clusters, but overall when you look at service providers, and overall when you look at enterprises, this is a key key feature that's um, that's actually been enhanced, the reduced start time. So what they have done, um, there's a new, when you go into adding roles and features, so on the features there's a new soft restart. Uh, what that allows you to do is, uh, it allows you to restart the machine without going through post. Uh, so what that's going to do is it reduces the time, uh, it reduces the amount of uh, time that you spend to get your servers rebooted, because at the moment if you look at when you restart a server, it goes through uh, memory validation, it goes through uh, checks for your uh, RAID controllers, goes for a check with your storage, so all of that takes place when you when you restart a server, so it takes about two to, two to three minutes for it to uh, come up. But with the soft restart, it kind of skips all of that and just restarts the operating uh, system instance. I'll, I'll show that in a demo on, on how you actually enable it and how you execute it. So we, we can't do it at the moment via the UI, so that's a partial uh, command that we use, so restart computer um, dash um, hyphen soft, which will allow you to do a soft restart on the server. When we do it on a VM, uh, it's really not making much of a difference, but if you do it a server, you would, you would really be able to see the difference in terms of uh, getting the server um, restarted and getting it up and running back to your operating environment. So another capability that, that's been improved again from, from the storage side is the, um, the quality of service for storage. So the quest for storage is being greatly improved because one of the challenges again when we look at service providers for instance you have a massive Hyper-V cluster, you have a um, file server cluster, and what you do is you, you provide services to your customers. So the challenge that we have with the current release is um, can't really provide uh, storage quality based on a, a policy that governs your tenant. So you can't really do a tenant-based policy, or so you can't do a, a policy that, that's going to uh, be focusing on a specific file share if you're, if you're VM on an SMB. Uh, file share. So what this uh, provides you is that you can now really go into detail and uh, and provide storage uh, quality of service for your VMs. You can also provide them for your tenant, so your virtual machine, um, your virtual machine tenants, and also it allows you to provide um, for your file shares as well. So if there's a CSV that I'm dedicating for a specific client, I can have uh, storage costs uh, defined on that. So they will not be competing for um, storage I/O. They will they will take the um, the I/O that's actually been scheduled for that particular tenant. So it really gives flexibility for service providers and also for for enterprises who would want to uh, provide more I/O for some of the demanding workloads, such as SQL, for instance, such as uh, Exchange that really takes a lot of the uh, the disk the storage I/O. So that's a new uh, new and improved feature. And we will be able to configure this uh, via VMM, uh, or you can you can do it via partial. So the next capability that I'm going to talk about is around the quorum. Um, so if you look at at the moment uh, the quorum model, it's it's already been simplified. So we have a couple of options. We can do a, a node majority. So if you have an odd number of nodes, you do a node majority. Um, if you have um, even number of nodes, you would then go ahead and do a, um, a node plus disk uh, witness. So that's the quorum. You would have a, a node plus disk, or you can you can still do your file share uh, witness as well. So if it's a configuration like a, like an exchange stretch across uh, sites, if it's a SQL stretch across uh, different sites, you can go ahead and do uh, a file share witness. So what we are going to look at over here is that. The, the requirement that we have from a disaster recovery point of view when you have multiple sites. So if, if this example, let's say it's, uh, it's Exchange, you have Exchange Node 1, Node 2, Node 3, and Node 4 sitting in two different sites, um, what, what needs to happen is that for, for you to ensure availability, you need to have a third site uh, and have a, vote, um, a voting available on that. So that's what we call as a file share witness. So this file share witness, when the site goes offline, site one goes offline, the, the file share witness will determine um, which service will come online on, on, uh, on node three and node four. So what we will be providing through site, um, the cloud, cloud witness is 
to use Azure for that service. So Azure will then monitor your site one and site two. It will monitor. So what happens is that the each node will communicate back to your Azure storage and say, yes, I am alive. And same goes with the other nodes. When a, when a service fails, what will happen is that the cluster service will then check with the Azure storage to see which which nodes are online, and based on that, it will form the quorum, and based on that, it will it will allocate resources. So if node one, node two, and node three fails, we can then say node four is the one that's active. Go ahead and um, go ahead and activate all resources on on node four. Same goes with inside as well. So if node one fails, it will not move everything to node three. It will look for the available node within the site, and it will assign resources to uh, node two. Um, so this is an example of how the cloud business will, will work. So what happens is that um, so the quorum um, the quorum has a mechanism of voting. So it's it's uh, that's that's how it's actually going to work. So what happens is that when you when you create cloud business, it's it's going to allow um, cloud business to have voting uh, as well to form the quorum. So if we have so we need to always have uh, odd number of or more than 50 percent of the votes to to form the the cluster. So if these two uh, site one all the, all the nodes are not available, what will happen is that on site two you would have node three voting, you would have node four voting, and then you would have the vote from the cloud business, which means that you have more than 50% of the votes, and then based on that it'll it'll form the cluster and it'll assign resources based on that. So you don't need to have a, a third site. So that's that's the um, the new addition. You don't have to maintain it, and the benefit, the, the the cost benefit, if you really look at it with the cloud maintenance, is uh, is the economics. It's very cheap to uh, have that file hosted on on Azure. Um, based on some of the statistics, um, if you host it for for a month, it's actually 0 0.010 cents um, that you'd have to pay because it it doesn't really store a lot of the data. It just checks the uh, availability of the services. So what are the differences? So if you know uh, at the moment, we have a file share witness available with the current uh, 2012 R2. So moving forward, uh, one of the recommendations would be to see if you can use the, the cloud witness instead of uh, using a file share witness. So one of the key differences, if you look at it, is that the, the permissions. Um, so if you have a file share witness, it has to be on the same domain. That's how the, uh, the cluster would get access to, to uh, write to that file share. But if you look at the cloud witness, the cloud witness is not going to be part of your domain because that's a service that um, that Azure is going to provide. So what's going to happen uh, on this is that you'd have um, you'd need to provide your storage account, and then you'd have your storage key provided, which will give you access, which which will give the cluster to access the uh, the storage, and then the cluster can um, access that and and maintain the the cloud witness. So that's that's a bit of a comparison on. Uh, on on the both on the file share and and the cloud witness, so the key key distinct difference is really around the permissions. So the cloud witness is not going to be part of your domain, whereas the file file share witness has to be uh, part of the domain. Yep. So we use a shared access security token. Uh, I'll show in the demo how we how we go ahead and uh, configure this. So this allows the um, this allows the cluster to access the storage volume and then write to that storage blob uh, which is hosted in, in Azure. So how we do it is, um, so if you don't have a storage account, the first step is to go ahead and create a storage account. So that's that's what um, we, we are seeing over here. Um, you'd go ahead new and do a, a create a new storage account. If you have a storage account already, you actually can use that, so you don't have to go ahead and, and create a new uh, storage account. You can still leverage on your existing uh, storage account. So moving forward, um, yep. So what happens is that you would get the URL for your storage, and then you would configure that uh, when you when you run your visit. You would configure that part of your uh, quorum configuration. So what happens is that the the visit looks almost the same. But when you go into advanced options, when you say right click, configure quorum, move into advanced options, what it's what it's now going to present you is with an additional uh, option which says uh, configure cloud witness. And when you go into that, it will provide, it will ask you for the name, uh, it will ask you for the uh, storage access key, and, and that's all. Um, 
you click next, it it'll automatically configure. It'll create the create the files available on on Azure. So before I I move into my demo, I need I need I'm, I want to explain the environment that I have set up for for this particular demo. So what I have here is I've got um, three environments. So I've got demo class two, I've got demo class three, and I've got demo class four. So for this particular demonstration, I'm going to use demo class three, which is a SQL cluster with four nodes, and this cluster is running on server vnext, so server uh, technical preview. Um, some of the demos I'm going to use uh, demo class two, which is a file share cluster, a file server cluster, which is actually having mixed operating systems. So it has server twin control, it also has uh, server vnext in the same cluster uh, together. Um, I've got another environment as well as a backup in case my um, my SQL cluster doesn't want to work. I'm going to use demo class four, which is a again a file server cluster that is built using uh, server vnext. So how I have done my convention, um, I've got demo class, and then for each cluster there's a name, so two, three, and four, and then uh, next to that it's CLN, so cluster node, and then there's a there will be a number. So if And the the machine that I'm going to access now will be uh, demo class three, and node uh, one. So demo class three and CLN um, one. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Can everyone see my screen? It's loading. Yeah, we can see the whole dam. Yep. Or whatever yep. it is. <laughs> All right, so what I will do is let me open up my um, cluster 3 and node 1. Let me make it. So if you look at this cluster that I have here, which is um, class 3, and if I move into roles, so this particular cluster is a SQL cluster. So I've got the services as a cluster resource. and if I move into nodes, I've got uh, four nodes, and you can see that they all got uh, votes assigned. So if I need to, I can also configure them to have a vote, which means that let's say we have uh, have two sites, and I've got only um, I don't want my services to automatically mount on the second site when there's a, a failure. I can remove those votes from node three and node four. So when it doesn't have a vote, it cannot form the quorum, so the services would not start. And then what you need to do is you need to go and uh, do a full start on on the cluster for it to for it to work. So how do I know uh, about my witness if I navigate onto my cluster? And it will say over here um, what I'm using. So let me see if I can zoom in. So over here you can see that um, at the moment using a witness disk. So it says witness equals uh, cluster disk one. So what I will do next is I'm just going to go into my storage and show you the disk that I'm using. So you can see it's just one disk that says uh, disk witness. Um, so what I what I want to do is I don't want to use my disk witness. I I want to configure this with my Azure account and provide my uh, and, and use it as a cloud cloud witness. So I'm going to right click on the cluster, and then if I go into more actions, what it's going to do is it gives me this option called configure cluster quorum settings. So clicking on that gives me three options. So you can do um, you can select the default options, which will automatically look at your cluster and see uh, the best option. It'll it'll then reconfigure the cluster. So if you have even nodes, it'll it'll not use a disk uh, witness. If you have um, if you have odd, odd number of nodes, it'll, it'll not um, use a disk witness. If you have uh, even 
of of nodes then then it will go ahead and uh, configure a disk uh, disk witness so in my case i've got uh, even number of nodes i've got four four nodes um so class cluster uh, cloud witness i'm going to click advanced quorum configuration click next and it gives me an option here i can i can change the voting if i so if i don't need my node 3 and node 4 to be part of this cluster to to vote for the quorum i can i can take them off i can uh, i can say nope i don't need a node 4 and node uh, node 3 and node 4 or and i can make just the machines that are in my primary site um, participate in informing the the quorum so i'm just going to select all the nodes um, click next so here we have the options so the disk witness is one option so this is what it's configured at the moment and then i've got the uh, the file share witness and then i've got the the cloud um, the cloud witness so what i will what i will do in this uh, demo is that i'm going to go ahead and configure my my cloud witness so select the the cloud witness click next and then we have options over here so the two options one is for uh, one option is for the storage account and the other one is for the uh, the storage account key so in order to get this what i need to do is i need to log into my azure account so i've got my azure account over here and then sorry i've got cloud services which has my um, so sorry need to go to storage so storage these are my storage accounts that I have um, so what I will do is I'll, I'll just pick one storage account so the one that's in uh, Australia um, and then I can click on manage access which will generate my uh, storage account name and also my primary access key so let me go ahead copy this and go back paste it over here so I've got my storage account name and then I'm going to get my access key, so I'll just say copy. Yep, so access key copied. And then I'm going to paste it over here. Click next. What it's going to do is it will check if my if it, it can access the um, the storage account, and then click next. It will go ahead and uh, configure that for me. So what's actually going to happen over here is that it'll it'll create a so successfully completed. Um, click finish and go back to my storage account so I'm just going to say to containers what we will see is that there's a new container now called Microsoft Cloud Witness so this is the container that my nodes will interact with my cluster will interact with this um, storage location and it will update the uh, the witness configuration nodes which which uh, nodes are active uh, which will help you form the uh, the cluster so this is a um, a good example when you have multiple sites uh, uh, for things like uh, SQL the file share clusters and also um, even if you want to spin up your cluster in Azure you don't need to invest money and bring a new VM to host a file share you actually can go ahead and, and create the, the cloud witness which will allow you to configure your, your cluster so going back into my cluster uh, manager you can now see that the uh, the witness is now set to cloud witness what will also happen is that we get i will have um, under my core resources i would have a new resource created called uh, cluster, cluster, cluster witness so that's a new uh, new resource type that's that has been introduced called uh, cluster witness for us to have the um, the cluster cloud witness created and the other dem demo that I want to show is the, the soft restart. <clears throat> so let me go into my server manager and let me go into manage, add roles and features. So click next. So node one. Um, the features yep so this one already has uh, soft restart installed so we have soft restart already so what that allows me to do is I'm um, just going to minimize my window open PowerShell and say um, 
restart. Let me open that again. So re computer and I can say do a soft restart. Just want to make sure that this is the VM and not my host. Alright. So click OK. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna do a quick reboot on the server. But uh, it's running on a VM. And then you can see that it's restarting, but it will not run through any any post uh, process. So in the VM, we, we will not see any any difference. But uh, if you if you do it on a on a server, you would you would be able to see see the difference. All right. So let me let me get back to uh, my decks. You can see that the let me come back to my presentation. A capability access key. So, for instance, if you look at the the storage account, you would have a primary access key and a secondary access key. The reason why we have two options over there is that if you need to change your access key, let's say the access key is compromised and uh, you want to go ahead and change it, what you can do is you can provide the second access key, and then you can go ahead and reset the primary access key. So it gives you two two options if you want to configure. So you could always either either use the primary or, or secondary. Secondary one is more of a backup if you want to go ahead and uh, and change change your uh, access key. So the next that I'm going to talk about is um, I'm going to talk about the rolling upgrade feature. So that's a, a key feature that's going to be introduced in uh, Server V next. So the capability is the, the issue that we have at the moment. If you look at the, the challenges around Upgrading the cluster. So if it's a Hyper-V cluster, if it's a file share cluster, or or if it's a um, a SQL cluster, uh, how how we are going to upgrade that into Server V next? So in order to okay, and others see my presentation or. Okay, so those who lost the presentation, you will have to rejoin. Uh, you'd be able to say join. Is that is that all good or? Um, I think I'll proceed ahead. Yep. So what we are looking at over here is the um, the two two operating systems, 23LR2 and and Server Next. And the challenge is that if you really look at it uh, from 2012, we had 23LR2, and now we don't have Server Server V next. So because of this uh, faster release cadence, the, the challenge is really around how you're going to move your workloads um, from from one operating system to another. So that's that's one of the key reasons why the the mixed um, the mixed OS mode or the the cluster rolling upgrade feature was introduced. This is to really provide a seamless experience when you want to upgrade your clusters. 
from one operating system to another. So if you if you look at the the feature that's going to get released, it's only going to support uh, 2012 R2. So that's that's not um, something that's going to change where you where it'll allow you to support uh, 2008 or 2008 R2. So the supportability at the moment, as it stands, is just for the previous release, which is uh, 2012 R2. So what this is going to do, it allows you to join um, both operating systems, so 2012 R2 nodes, and also um, be next in the same cluster. So this is something that we can't do at the moment. So if you have a 2008 cluster, you can't ins uh, you can add 2012 R2 or you can't add 2008 R2 instances to that uh, cluster. So it has to be the same operating system. So that's one of the things that gets checked when you go ahead, right click and do a uh, add server. It, it gets checked. So what's going to happen with 2012 R2 and VNext is it allows you to add a mixture of operating systems. So 2012 R2 and VNext in the same cluster. So keep in mind, in order to do that, you need to add the node from server vnext. You actually can't add it on 2012 R2. So if you go to 2012 R2 and try to do add, it's going to say um, it's not going to add uh, at, at the server. It will say that the operating system isn't matching. So that's why we, we use the, um, the updated uh, remote administration tools, or you need to log into a server vnext, and from that uh, failover cluster manager, you would go ahead and add the um, um, the vnext uh, instances. So, uh, no. So that's a question. Uh, will it be in two node cluster becomes three node in? That's correct. So, um, so there's a couple of scenarios around that. If you look at, so one scenario is that uh, you have a two node cluster that you have, and you want to upgrade this cluster. So. Two possible outcomes is that either you want to purchase hardware, that's that's one option. You would buy new servers, and you would join them as a third node and a fourth node. That's that's one uh, scenario. The second scenario is that yes, you want to preserve the hardware that you have already. So in that case, what you what you will do is you will um, you will remove one one node from the cluster, so it will be single node uh, cluster. So you remove one node. So now your cluster is running with uh, a single single instance. You will then format that machine. You would put a server v next, and then you connect it to your storage, configure the networks, and then you will join join to the uh, the single node cluster. You will join the second node. So now, in that scenario, what happens is you have node one as your server 22 R2, and then you have node two, which is server v next. And once you join the cluster, what you can then do is and remove. Into your your cluster, so it, it's a bit risky when you do it with just two nodes. Um, while you do the upgrade, something goes wrong with your uh, last instance, you then have uh, downtime. So it's usually um, practical when you have three nodes or four nodes. Uh, it's pretty easy to do that. You can uh, remove a couple of instances and then you can bring them on board uh, with your um, so we next cluster. So we look at some of the scenarios. If you look at this particular cluster at the moment, it has five instances. And all the instances are running now with uh, server uh, 2012 R2. So what happens uh, next is um, what happens next is that you would remove one node. If you look at this example, at the moment there's four nodes, but the fifth node gets removed, so you'd uh, remove that from the cluster. And then what you would do is you would format it. Uh, you would format that particular node, and then you would install server vnext. So now we have a new node that is part of uh, server vnext. And then what, what you would do is you would go ahead and add it to the same cluster. So this is the mixed uh, functional level, or the mixed um, the mixed cluster feature that we, we talk about, so the mi mixed operating systems. So moving next, what you would do is you then get your fourth node also uh, upgraded. So you would have one by one, you would get your instances upgraded to server vnext. So the machines get joined to the same uh, cluster uh, computer object, so it's the same same object. We are not changing any any cluster uh, computer objects. One of the issues that I noticed, uh, or we, we rather experience with Server 2012 when you use the copy cluster wizard, is that if you have for a product like uh, DPM, for an instance, taking host level backups. Um, so if you have if you are backing up a cluster. Um, what happens is that the communication is placed from your cluster name. 
So all your host backups are for DPM. The D DPM agents we will deploy to every host. But how DPM will see the environment is through the cluster name. And and the challenge that we had with uh, with the client is when you do the cluster copy and you move them into a new cluster. Now DPM will not allow you to protect them anymore because still DPM tries to communicate them via the um, the cluster name. Whereas your hosts are now connected to a new cluster name because it's not part of the old cluster anymore. So we have challenges like that if you use backups or if you use configuration which are cluster um, cluster name specific, you would you then need to reconfigure them. But in this uh, in this new feature where it allows us to join mixed um, instances into the same cluster, uh, the configuration doesn't really change. You can still use the same name. You can you still use the same cluster name. And you seamlessly upgrade and rejoin them back into into the environment. So once you have the last um, instance upgraded to serve next, what we do next is we we do something called raising the functional. So this is something similar to what we used to do with uh, Active Directory as well. So when you do an Active Directory upgrade, you would still have your functional level or host functional level or the domain functional level still on the previous release. So what you do is then, if you want to get the new group policy capabilities, you would go ahead and raise that function level. So similarly, what we will do in the cluster is that we would go ahead and raise that cluster uh, function level to uh, vnext. So that's that's the command that uh, we we use shell command to do that, and then that will raise that function level. Why why do we need to do that? If we don't upgrade the function level, you would not be able to use any new features, new capabilities that gets introduced on the uh, new cluster um, cluster window server v next. So if level, you will then get exposed to the new features that cluster is having on, on server v next. So it's required for you to go ahead and uh, upgrade that. So how we do it is we use this command called update cluster function level. So it's a PowerShell command, and once you uh, once you execute that, it'll it'll upgrade the function level of the cluster. So it's just one command. You you run that, and that'll go ahead and uh, upgrade that. Um, but do keep in mind that it's a it's not a reversible process, so you can't change that back to uh, eight, which is for 2012 R2. Uh, once it's updated, it it becomes uh, version nine. So once you do that, that's when the upgrade process gets completed. So that's when uh, your your cluster OS uh, rolling upgrades gets completed. Once you run the update cluster uh, functional commandlet. So one of the examples is um, again for scale out file servers. If you want to upgrade your uh, file servers, you can um, bring your um, cluster instances. You can bring your cluster nodes, connect to your storage, uh, format it, install server so next, and then um, you can upgrade it in a seamless way. So this is this is an example uh, for that. We would go ahead and change the two two instances to bring it with uh, vnext, and then we would still have uh, all the um, clients can still access the resources. So I'll show in my my example, we actually can move our resources from server 2012 R2 to server vnext without any any downtime. And then once everything's updated, you would go ahead and uh, run the uh, cost. Let me dive into demo. So that's my uh, last. And and see if there's any feedback. So let me dive into the demo. Meanwhile, if if there's any any questions that you want to uh, raise, please put them in the IM window. So I'll uh, I'll have a look at it. Can everyone see my screen? Yep, all right. So let me continue. So for this example, I'm going to get connected to um, cluster two, so CLS. Two and I'm going to join. I'm going to get connected to uh, my my first uh, node. So, if you look at, uh, I'm just going to make it full screen. And what I will do, I'll just to show you the version that I'm running. So, this 
So this instance is a 2012 art. And then when I navigate into nodes, I can see that I've got six nodes in this cluster. At the operating system version below. So right now this one's a 2012 data center. Um, navigating into number two, number three, number four, they are all 2012 uh, R2. Uh, but if I check five, this is a tech preview. So we next again uh, moving to six. Six is a is a tech preview as well. So keep in mind when you have the mixed operating systems running, there's an event that gets locked. So um, I'll show that in a bit as well. So it's one five four eight. So this what it says is that um, it's a it's a different operating system, but it's compatible. Uh, but it's recommended that the same versions of the cluster to be installed on no nodes, saying that you're actually running mixed uh, mixed mode. This is to give a give perspective that you're not going to run mode forever. Uh, it's just a temporary measure for you to get. So what I'm going to do next. So we have an eight node cluster running. Just going to quickly add uh, the two nodes. So demo CLS uh, two CLN seven. And eight. So at this one, oh, I need to go back and add them from survey next UI. So I'm just going to minimize this one and connect to node six. So node six is the one that's running uh, survey next. So yep, class node six, and let me make it uh, full screen. And then what I will do is let me go ahead and add uh, two more nodes to, to this cluster. So next, not going to run through the all disks and uh, add them to my existing uh, cluster. So why that's run? So that's come. To notes that uh, also want to do is I've got a file share running. Um, so if I connect from my computer, I can access this uh, file share. Okay. Uh, maybe a few folders and then. Can see that it's at the moment running on node five. So that's they say um, change it to server to into a R two. So my instant I can still still work on them. I can I can delete. Um, I can also now if I want I can move it to instance six or yep. So I can move it to instance six, which is a server next instance. You can see that it's it's connected now, and uh, and I can still I can keep on working. And regardless of which which operating system, you can move resources um, back and forth, and it's not going to cause you cause you any downtime. So what I also want to show is run um, few commands to do the upgrade, um, show you the status of the cluster. So let me move into Node 5, where I've saved my commands. So make it full screen. So I'm now on cluster Node 5. And I'm just going to run this command. This is a get cluster node command, so which will show how many nodes cluster and shows the versions of all the nodes. So you can see over here at the moment, so I've got eight nodes, and then you can see over here that uh, the cluster functional level. There's different functional levels. So there's eight, which is for server 2012 R2, which is the build number here. And then I have 9841 server v next, which is having um, functional level 9. And if I do 
and if I say get me all the properties so hell we will also be able to see that this particular cluster is still on version 8 so this is a new property that's been function level you can see that this is now in, in version 8 so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to quickly remove my um, my cluster, the older cluster instances. So I'm going to remove the 2012 R2 um, cluster nodes. So accessing the failover cluster manager. Yep, it's opening up. Um, and access my demo class 2 right click um, navigating to nodes and then we're going to remove one by one uh, node 1 to 4 so sort by the name so more actions yep we'll do the same for node 2 as well node 3 Node 4. So what that's doing at the moment is it's removing those nodes from, from the cluster. And once that's done, what we will do is we'll run another command uh, just to see how many instances that we have in this cluster. Yep, so everything's been removed. I'm just going to execute this one, which gives me a table. Um, so at the moment, if you look at you can see that all my all my um, members on this cluster they are all on functional level 9 so now I've, I've, uh, I've upgraded all the instances in the cluster so I've removed all the old instances I have my server role so my file server role is still up and running I can I can still access content on that uh, file share so if I do um, so if I say slash slash trying to access the file share so demo cl2 fs01 my uh, the two, two folders that I created before. Yep, so it's showing me the, the file share as well. So what I will do now, I'm going to upgrade this cluster because if you notice here, it's still giving me the warnings. So it still gives me a warning saying, uh, so 1255 gives me a warning saying you're still running. Um, so 1548, so still running the mix. So let's go ahead and open. functional level so it says that um, you can't undo this operation so it's a it's a one-way uh, upgrade because that will change the the functionality of your cluster and click yes which will go ahead and uh, and upgrade the cluster so you can't use things like uh, cloud witness if you don't if you haven't upgraded the cluster so now that uh, the cluster is upgraded you can see that it still maintains this Up and I can still update it, and this is how we how we seamlessly upgrade um, your clusters. Either it's a file share cluster, either it's a Hyper-V cluster. Uh, how you would upgrade it to the that is the end of my demo. So if there's any questions, um, I would like to spend few few minutes beforehand. Uh,